enter the computer verse. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and cryptids from all dimensions. I am your host, Download. Welcome back to the computer verse as we're journeying deeper into our second season. How exciting! We have so many special guests coming on the show for season two. I am literally giddy with excitement. I uh, just want to remind anyone that's listening, if you enjoy what we're doing here, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you're joining us on YouTube so you can enjoy all of our further adventures. Today, we have an awesome show for you. Our guest has been in the streaming community delivering quality content to his viewers, aptly dubbed Watchers. For the better part of the past decade, I want to extend a very warm welcome to our good friend, Watch Out Loud. Hey, how's it going? It's a, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Just living pleasure the dream. To be doing a, oh, yeah. It's a pleasure to do uh, another podcast with you. I, yeah. I think the last one I did with you was like, like what, five years ago? Oh, my God. It's a, a whole, it li- so a whole lifetime at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so how's life treating you these days, man? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, just trying to keep above this whole COVID nonsense. Still lucky to be able to work. And then uh, just trying to come up with amazing content, to be honest with you. Yeah, we're going to jump into all of that good stuff. Thank you for, you know, first of all, giving me the time to talk to you. Uh, I want to jump into our first segment called Get to Know Watch Out Loud. Again, if someone wants to come up with the jingle, still waiting. We need that jingle. I'm too lazy to do it myself. So I want you guys to do it. Guys, Um, make the jingle. Come on. (laughs) Even if it's just humming, I'll use it. I don't give a shit. It could be, you just go outside and record some shopping cart foley or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyway, (laughs) let's get to know you. Number one, first question. Who's your favorite actor right now? Favorite actor? Ooh, I don't, like, oh, I don't even know. It's a tough question, right? It's a really tough question because I don't normally like watching movies that have, because I'm really big into, like, the the horror genre, and Uh. I hate seeing anybody that I I know as an actor in a horror genre because it kind of takes me away from it. So it's it's really hard to say. Uh, I'd say Ryan Reynolds is pretty fantastic, but... And, and uh, but he's also the same character in every single movie. It, he's it's Ryan hard. Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. He's but, one of those dudes. He's like the yeah, Rock. He's just Ryan say, Reynolds. And then like even going to Deadpool. I mean Deadpool. The reason he's Deadpool is because there's a comic that literally said Deadpool was Ryan Reynolds, and so Ryan Reynolds was like, okay, I'll do it. And then he just played Ryan Ryan Reynolds. He I, definitely. I, I don't know. He loves the character though. I think that. Oh yeah. No, I, at this point, I don't think anyone else could play. Deadpool in the same way that it's going to be very jarring to see someone else play Wolverine, but that's for different reasons. It's not because yeah. Hugh Jackman like destroy. It's like he's not the embodiment of Wolverine. Like I've seen Hugh Jackman in other roles where I've been like, oh, he's a good actor, you know. But Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. So yeah, it's it's kind of like Iron Man. Like I couldn't see Iron Man without it being Robert uh, Downey Jr. That's going to be so weird. What what are they going to do about that? It's like, are they going to retcon the whole thing, or are they going to? They can't bring back Robert Downey Jr. Like it's just he's over it at this point. I'm yeah, he's sure he done. Wants to pursue different things. Um, I think it took I think it took him a while to even bring him back for uh, Avengers. But when he heard that was going to be like a big finale, I think that's why he came back into it. Yeah, they had to wrap up the whole thing, and he was like, probably also give me fifty million dollars, and I'll do. It. And you know who's gonna <laughs> right. 50 mil is he's like let me just I'm gonna buy an island so yeah I'll do whatever you want. 15 minutes like, of screen time, sure. Oh yeah, like Spider Man, I can understand the reboots, and you can see all these different people as Spider Man, but like it's just like people like Iron Man or anybody like that. It's really hard to see somebody else like them. He's he they, okay. So the Marvel company, like MCU, built the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe basically on the back of Iron Man. Like yeah. before, before Iron Man, there was Hulk, and no one fucking cared. And then they revamped it, and you know. There was yeah. the Incredible Hulk, or I don't know which one came first. Don't flame me. Post in the comments. But, they were just uh, flops until until Iron Man. They were both bad, yeah. and they they even so so much so that it goes without saying. Like you guys at home, view, viewers and listeners at home probably know. I mean, like you know, it's it's a different Hulk. It's fucking Mark Ruffalo yeah. now. So, oh yeah, it's it's the perfect Hulk. I think at this point. I like I liked Edward Norton in the role, but apparently he's just like a yeah. fucking he's he's a pain in the ass to work with. Like so many actors out there, I feel I feel like his was a little bit more dark, and it worked better with uh, with the Hulk becoming like one with him becoming the Hulk and and having like a normal mind instead of like the caveman mind there at the end. Yeah, the caveman, so. ca- the Hulk mind. Yeah, exactly. You know, I watched this funny video about uh, why it was about 
you know, I, I don't know for anyone who listens at home, you probably know that I'm a I'm a big DC Comics fan, but I also love Marvel. I, I've even so much so like I've I've grown in my love for Marvel now because they just execute so much better than DC does. Oh yeah. Um, and really, what it comes down to, and from what this video said, it's on YouTube. I can't remember the title of it, so I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase right now. But um, the best medium to watch these com or to learn about comic books is through watching films and TV. And like when they don't just nail it, it's totally fucked. And that's why DC is screwed. It's like they have great stories, but no one fucking pays attention to reading comics because it's such a niche yeah. genre. That... I mean, even Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't even know what that was. And then after I watched the movie, I loved it. I started researching some of Guardians of the Galaxy and like looking at backstories online and stuff. And that's it got me a little bit. I'm not like a big comic book nerd or anything, but whenever I like really enjoy something, I always go online and, and kind of research it and get some some backstory because movies never give it 100 percent justice. So. Well, you're never I mean, you're not wrong. I think that the yeah. difference, though, is that, you know, if Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't in some way true to the source material and didn't make the characters lovable, people wouldn't have watched the film. They wouldn't yeah, have had exactly. a second one in the pipeline. Like they would, you know, it would have been a one and done kind of situation. So you got to give James Gunn credit because he definitely read more than one comic or more than four oh, yeah. comics. And the downside oh, with, uh, with a lot of the Batman films is that these directors take too many liberties and like Zack Snyder, for instance, who has directed so many DC films. We're getting so nerdy here, guys, but that's what the podcast <laughs> if, if you're here on the podcast, you probably know what it is that we talk about. So we talk about yeah. a bunch of different stuff. Um, but, you know, Zack Snyder definitely read like the four major Batman uh, kind of yeah. kind of uh, arcs. And, and from there, you don't really you're not able to um, really develop a, a love and understanding for the character rather than, OK, he fights crime. He's a rich dude. You know, there's a lot of depth to every superhero out there, especially given like you have to understand that these, um, these brands, these, these characters have been published for decades. Yeah. So it's almost like a person, you know, there's decades and decades of stories and decades of dialogue and decades of, of character building that if you only read four stories, which were written consecutive, I mean, not even consecutively, but respectively, uh, between, you know, months on their own by different writers, it's not an accurate perception of who these uh, who these characters are so Marvel does a really good job because when they come up with like Thor for instance which is a great example there have been four four Thor movies I think or the fourth yeah, one is about to come all, out they all did pretty well like there wasn't I think Hulk is the only one out of the group uh, that didn't have a like didn't have good movies I think all the, the rest of them they really picked up on on the like the formula of making a good movie and stuff. So. Exactly. And and Hulk has not had another movie since. Yeah. Yeah. They, they used him as more of a big side character character and, and, and people are really enjoying that. I think that's him, great. Yeah. Like because he's, he's kind of like one, of, uh, I guess he's not the strongest, but he has a massive strength and you expect him just to be crazy brute strength. And it's kind of predictable and there's no emotion behind the Hulk. And I think that's why people like the movies never worked. There was but no like story development. I think that's the issue though, is the people that made those first initial movies only read a couple of Hulk comics. So they weren't like, they, they, they didn't give us very much to sink our teeth into. So what do we think? Hulk is unrelatable, but yeah. through all of these uh, films and developing him as a side character, which sometimes guys is very valuable because look at, um, Look at Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Great fr film franchise. They, it's one of the most profitable film franchises of all time. Uh, yet another Disney property, right? Yeah. But um, the first one is so charming and such an adventure. Uh, you know, The Curse of the Black Pearl was just a total left field kind of fucking movie. Where yeah, you that like, was a good. Whoa. That was really. I've never seen the last one. The, I forgot what it was. It was like the ghost guy or something. <laughs> I I don't even know if. I, I don't even know if Johnny Depp's in it. He's in it. Think, this is, oh, he this, is? Okay. this is my point, though. All right. So yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean has now – there have been like five films. And oh, we can remember the first three, really. Those were the ones that that's kind of stuck with us. The first one for sure. Like that yeah. was – and what was the, the what was so magical about that film was uh, Johnny Depp is the side character. He's not the main – like yeah. end all be all of pirates of the Caribbean. He's just a pirate of the Caribbean, you know, and, and like the Jack Sparrow thing is a mysterious kind of side quest, which makes the story pop. But the real story yeah. is about Elizabeth Tur or uh, Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner, right? So Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley respectively. Yeah. And uh, how they're kind of trying to get away from the, the things that are holding them down in life. Like, like Will Turner is a fucking blacksmith and like, 
you know, he's kind of <laughs> – he works for these really wealthy people and is not really wealthy himself. Or, and so he, he has all these dreams but can't really ever achieve them. And then w- Elizabeth Swan is uh, the daughter of a governor. So she, she, she's, like, feeling repressed by having to live up to the societal standards of being that person. And yeah. through, pi- through, <laughs> through piracy, through becoming <laughs> a pirate, you know, Jack Sparrow shows them that there's more to life. So that first film – is important you know the second and third film are these like huge marvels of of cinema they were at the time i think some of the most expensive films ever made and uh in my opinion it's like they are uh, uh, like the like those uh, greek epic stories or whatever like there's so much happening and it's like whoa yeah. uh, they might be a little bit like you know, congested with with stud st- uh, star studded cameos or whatever, yeah, but exactly. like they had fucking Keith Richards in one of them. That was t- by at the hest of Johnny Depp, who was like, I based the character off of Keith Richards, and Keith Richards they, Disney was like, let's get that fucker in here. But it was good, <laughs> nonetheless. It was yeah. good. There were moments that kept you on the edge of, the, of, of your seat. It was like there was rewatch value even while it was still in theaters. And then the oh yeah, the fourth and fifth film came out and. Basically, I, I, at the risk of I've been talking about this for like six minutes, but like at the risk of <laughs> of uh, talking about it for the whole show, you know, uh, they they made the whole franchise about Jack Sparrow when Jack Sparrow should have just been the strongest supporting character through and through, and yeah. uh, that's kind of like the thing with, that I think that they're they're rectifying with the Marvel Cinematic Universe is if you're looking at Hulk, Hulk is they're still developing him as this uh you know this uh what, what am I trying to say? Assisted care, assisting character. What did I yeah, just say? Like, like he's like, yeah, he's like, in the, uh, like, he's side like character. a background character. Yeah, yeah. He's a side character. He's like almost like a sidekick. He's like the big, like brute. If, yeah. it, if, if like a bad guy has like a big brute bodyguard or something, that's basically what he was. And then this last movie, what was it? The last movie, I think was the only one where he had like brain train of thought. Yeah, yeah. He had his, he could like combine them and they work together the, the Hulk. And then, uh, and then what's his name? So like, I, I feel like if they they take that, they could definitely bring him back and make like a full on movie. That's how you, especially rectify. since he's been to space and everything. Like, there's so much they could do with it. Well, that was a great film, uh, Thor Ragnarok, because they infused so many different parts of the comics, and uh, you know they even threw in a little bit of Planet Hulk, which people were just like foaming at the mouth to, wa- uh, to oh, see, yeah. you know, uh, what, what's it called? Kind of uh, made into a film or whatever. You said that you're a big fan of horror films. Um, oh, yeah. Have you seen – this is just like a left field thing, but one of my favorite horror movies right now, which is just so – it's a, it's so grindhouse. It's a – it's not really like inherently scary, but it's a total blood and guts film. Have you seen Terrifier? Oh, the Terrifier 2 uh, just announced the second right. one is coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah Terrifier with... is, is such an awful movie, but it's an awful cult movie that you can't – like it's so entertaining to watch. It's so bad so it's good. Oh yeah, it's so bad. It's good. It's so predictable. <laughs> well, actually, no. I would say there's some parts of the first one that were like not predictable. I thought somebody was like going to survive, and then they don't survive. And there's a lot of that going on. It's very just, just traumatizing and bloody and gory. So it, yeah. it's a gore fest for sure. Yeah, That's yeah. The best I, way to describe it. Yeah, I. It's there's really no story plot for no. the most part, except for a, a clown. Yeah, I I hope we get a tiny just just an inch of story about the clown because yeah. like the clown, like just enough to like when the movie's over you, you're you're still thinking about it like I wonder if it's because of this or like what what if the clown is Lovecraftian or something or I don't know just yeah like, yeah 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 something that makes your mind wonder like that would make the sequels so much better and he's still like have an, all the gold and stuff he's like an eldritch monster like summoned from dope. the the abyss but uh that's where the first terrifier if you have seen it that's where it really does fall short is there is no fucking plot at all oh, it no. is like there is it's like meaningless sex it's like there's almost there's almost <laughs> no dialogue either <laughs> there's almost no dialogue and the dialogue that is there is fucking awful <laughs> it's so bad it's like a high school it's like a high school film <laughs> so the thing is if terrifier 2 is a carbon copy of the first one it's gonna be so bad and it's it's going to be yeah. near near unwatchable because we've it'll be more of the same, you know. But I'm super excited to see what they do. It'll it'll be a testament to Damien Leone, the director's uh you know filmmaking skill, to see if he does give Art the Clown a little bit more backstory. And I, well, Art the Clown actually originated in what what was the other movie? It's, All it's Hallows Eve. Up. Yeah, All yeah. Hallows Eve. That's where the the idea originally came from. But this movie. 
I, I find it interesting because it seems like it's right where the last one is. I don't want to like say too much, but uh, right where the last one left off, where Art the Clown comes in. So there has sense. to be, there has to, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. saw the trailer, yeah. like where Art the Clown kind of like comes back is yeah. kind of the ending of the first one. I, I'm not really giving it any no, away. We, there's yeah. no story. So, <laughs> yeah, no spoilers. So, yeah. but uh, All Hallows Eve, I understand, is not canon. It's just like a, a yeah. separate, a separate like Elseworld kind of thing. It's not really yeah. the same. I mean, it's funny to think that there are all of these horror characters, right? And did you ever see that movie Freddy vs. Jason? Oh, God, yeah. So bad, right? But it's kind of like conceptually in my mind, I think it's a, it's a great fucking concept. Like, why don't we have more of these crossovers that are actually well done? Because they're, they're almost like super villains in their own right, right? Yeah. It's like uh, they just when, kill people. When... One big aspect was uh, Hollywood tried to do is bring back monster, like the monster Cineverse with uh, they made a Dracula movie and it was basically, oh. basically Dracula in like Game of Thrones. It was awful. What? Uh, yeah, it was really bad. And then, of course, the mummy where it wasn't even a horror. Or it was anything. Tom, it didn't have... Tom Cruise. Yeah, it was more of like an adventure. And it was like even I remember Jekyll and Hyde was coming in. I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. Nothing happened. He just got angry. It's just a guy with a. <laughs> Uh, anger disorder uh, <laughs> and then finally hollywood they they reduced the price point of making these like monster cineverse movies and they finally made one uh i don't know if you've seen invisible man i yeah. think invisible man is the best monster cineverse movie because it's the best way in a modern way to take uh to take a look at like the invisible man it's such a crazy movie if you haven't checked it out i would definitely say anybody that's listening or watching should definitely check out that movie. I, I did enjoy it. I think that was a Blumhouse film as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and they do, they, they do a really good job with everything that they're involved with, to be honest. Um, I would like to see Universal really nail all of those movies. I don't, I can't remember. See, like, that's the thing. When a movie's not great, it's not memorable. They have to make yeah. something memorable. And it's like, how do you reinvent these characters? Maybe you just don't. Maybe you just retell it in such a way that it's fucking awesome. I did see part of a, a Dracula series on Netflix, which I really enjoyed. It was super creepy. There was a lot of like yeah. ghostly left field stuff going on. Um, but of course not the universal monsters, Dracula. And I do yeah. hear, uh, so universal studios is in the process of building another theme park in Florida called universal's epic, epic universe. And, uh, one land in that theme park will be is, or is said to be universal's monsters. So if that's the case, you know, why did you remake the mummy with Tom fucking Cruise? <laughs> right? <laughs> like I mean I would like to see all of these characters come come to light. I'm not the biggest fan of the the you know, but I think that there's a I think that there's more value almost to the slashers and like to to guys like Jason and and fucking I mean there's value to all of them, but I'd like to see them in the same universe as like you know like me, I don't know. I, I maybe yeah, I'm just no, thinking out of line, but they're all great characters on their own. The thing that takes away from it is the fact that we've had 10 fucking episodes of seeing Jason kill teenagers where it's yeah. like, let's explore, you know, them, him as just like a villain. Like, that's the great I thing remember, about the comics, you know? I remember when Friday the 13th, uh, Jason goes to, was it New York or something? Oh, God. So Dude, I, when I, I remember when that came out, I'd already seen one of the movies and I was like, oh, that'd be so cool to see Jason just go in the public and the, like – Nobody's stranded out in the woods or anything. They just like he's just going around fucking shit up, and uh, and they didn't do that. It was it was like ninety percent on a boat, and then they ran away through a sewer, ended up in New York. He yelled at some punks on the street in New York, threw a guy into a mirror at a, a cafe, and then that's it. New York. That's all he did. He's it wasn't like, like Jason rampaging on the streets of New York and just meleeing everyone with a machete. Yeah. Which is what we wanted like, to see. It could have just been him, like, not just going crazy, but he could have just, like, walked down the street going after him and then just taking the machete, anybody that, that's next to him, and just slash their throat and just keep going. Like, he doesn't care. That would give him, like, this dead feel. They just ruined it. Hey, so it like... That is the space one. <laughs> I think... Oh, that one was even worse, because that, that, that was just, like, a total fucking ball of shit that they, they threw at the wall to see if, it's, if it would stick. But oh, here's an idea. So... Jason, let's try the New York thing again, right? He goes back to New York and he's fucking people up the way that we're talking about it, like just like like terrifier style, like not like fucking ruthlessly fucking people up. We already know the backstory, so this is what we want from a Jason yeah. movies. We just want to see like nonstop brutality, right? 
And then yeah. suddenly Superman arrives and it's a fucking <laughs> true battle, dude. I mean, Superman would just, just, it would, it's not even comparable, but they said that in the Jason story at some point, they said that he's like a demon, which is also like the people, the, there's been too many writers like ingesting their, or, um, inputting their, their fucking bit of story. And it's like, once you get to the demonology aspect of a, of a character, like they're like, Oh, by the way, it's a demon. It's like that. Yeah. Why does it have to come back to that? They had to, yeah. that's the way that they had to make him like, uh, well, that so was, OP. That was Freddy. That was Freddy as well. Like he had the deadites. Yeah, him that brought him back, and then I think that was the same. That's why it was Jason versus Freddy, is because the story plot became Jason, based off revenge for his mother, got brought back by the Deadite, and which is a demon or something like that. Yeah, Freddy has dream demons, which uh, yeah, I, it's it's like all bullshit. I mean, yeah. it, whatever. <laughs> like you know, it's all well and good. Uh, speaking of bullshit, let's move on to question number two, as we've been talking right. for twenty minutes about this awesome shit. You receive a GameCube. <laughs> And you rub right. it three times to reveal a genie lives inside. What are your three right. wishes for the GameCube genie? It, are these any wishes or are they restricted to like it's any polygon wishes. based? Oh, okay. So I mean, just he just lives in a GameCube. It's that maybe he couldn't find okay. a, a lamp. Let me just see if that'll work real fast. Just That's the controller though, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's a PC. Con it's for my speed runs. But uh, <laughs> uh, what would I wish for? Ah, oh, dude, I don't know. Like, my wishes would probably be pretty obvious. Money. Like, not to worry about money. Um, I know you, like, when it comes to wishes based on other movies, you gotta think it out because sometimes genies are pissed off because they're always stuck in, like, the GameCube or the the the, the lamp or something. This so is they, not a Wishmaster situation. Yeah, but I feel like that's – if I was a genie and I was stuck for like 10,000 years, I'd be like, I'm coming out and I'm going to mess some stuff up. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going to mess with some people and kill them before their third wish and then I'm free forever. Um, Side note, don't turn this dude into a genie. <laughs> no, uh, wish number two, uh, get rid of COVID. Just destroy COVID 100%. Like just get rid of it. Uh, and number three – um, I mean, we've got uh, billions of dollars and lots of people trying to work towards that goal. So maybe number two will eventually come true. Yeah, but I'd rather it happen right now, especially <laughs> when I have when I have a family that has autoimmune and stuff, and yeah, they're yeah. at risk of dying of if they get it. So of course, um, and plenty of people have already died. But the Too other many. one, this is going to sound like just topical or something, but it's a hundred percent that everybody. Third wish, everybody agrees that every person is just a person. I love it. That's there great. we go. That's All literally right. like two of the biggest problems of 2020 solved right there because of the GameCube. Yeah, I know, right? That's Who would have thought? Thank, hey, thank you, Nintendo. Nintendo and, Genie. And then <laughs> my uncle works at Nintendo. Maybe he can hook me up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Plot twist, your uncle is the Nintendo Genie. <laughs> yeah, which celebrity or prominent figure would you most want to meet in real life? Oh, man. I go with the celebrities. I'm not big on keeping up with celebrity stuff. So, hmm. Even like even though I'm a huge movie buff, I uh man, I don't know. I don't know who I would want to meet like girl-wise. It could uh, be anybody, I, dude. And for any uh, purpose. Olivia, uh, <laughs> I, well, well, if it's if we're talking about girls, I'd love to meet Olivia Wilde for sure. There you go. There you See? go. Celebrity crush of like the longest time. So we'll just say that. That's that's that's, easy way. that's the juiciest answer. That's what yeah. we wanted. We want we wanted the juiciest answers, man. We don't want no fucking. <laughs> I want to meet Tom Cruise because I am a big fan of the Mummy. Like, uh, you're the anomaly here. I think. I'm not saying <laughs> Olivia Wilde, you know, I, I I think, you know, more power to you. It's your question. You're the guest, you know? Yeah. So, Olivia Wilde, if you're listening, let's set something up with you and Wes, yeah, right? Yeah, let's 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 chat. Let's chat some stuff up. Maybe we can play some games on stream. There you go. Do some blindfolded baking. I don't know. Maybe. Why not? <laughs> I mean, what Why not? What could be more fun, right? <laughs> uh, wh where would you take Olivia Wilde on a date? I'm pretty sure she's married, but yeah, yeah, like that's that's why I said let's just hang out. I was uh, trying okay. to be 
disrespectful, but that's uh, not disrespectful. Where would I her on a yeah, date, yeah, yeah. Uh, date? Yeah, I'm looking it up. Is she what? Is she married? <laughs> like we don't even know. We just don't want to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is. Hey, you know what? Uh, she's just got. She's just got a boyfriend. But so uh, okay. so you still got to respect it. But maybe Jason Sudeikis is uh... a. <laughs> it's it's that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe if I still had my hair, I might uh, still have a chance. I think it's but, good. Uh, it's a good deal. You know. What's the ideal huh. date though? For not maybe not Olivia Wilde because I mean, but if she's listening, she might be like, "Damn, that's a great date idea." But like the best date? Like, yeah. Would you say like first date or just date in general? No, it would have to be a first date because you know you've never met. So. Oh okay. Well, I just thought you meant in general. No, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. Uh, honestly, my best idea for a date is uh, not dinner in a movie. Dinner in a movie is like the worst date you can go on because Very first generic. of all, your stuff. Is- you're, you're stuffing your face with food. Nobody likes to talk while they're just um, um, um. So there's a period of time where there's no talking except for like in between eating. And then at a movie, you can't talk at all. You can't figure out the person or if they're crazy or not or anything like that. Uh, so I don't call. know. Something, so something, something exciting. Like a concert might be good. It's still kind of loud. I would never take them to a bar. Bars are just, that's just asking for trouble. That's just. Yeah. Because you can both get drunk, you don't know how things could go well, and then you don't know if that was just the booze or if it was actually a connection or something. I don't know. A concert would be pretty dope. Um, what about coffee? Is coffee like a pretty ba- – that's like a little bit too acquaintancey, though, right? No, I, I don't mind coffee. It just depends on – a lot of people like to have dates later in the afternoon, and if I have coffee late in the afternoon, I'm just I'm just up all night long. There you I go. Have I mean, you have a date in well, the stream? Yeah, there- yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Coffee, coffee would be a good idea. A coffee, and then maybe like just a walk and hang out. Uh, I don't know. Try and figure. You gotta you usually gotta try and figure out a little bit more about the person before you go on a date, and then maybe right. kind of base a little bit off that. Unless but, it's just, a, do people still do blind dates? Do people still just I, go on like that's that's like a, a weird I've, situation. I've never done it. I've never done a blind date. I've never had somebody like hook me up with a date, be like, "Oh, here's a date you should go on." But like, I've never had that happen. Huh. So I don't know how people do that. I'm sure there's a lot more. I I want to know, uh, you know how to. I want to know how many relationships have existed with longevity from going on a blind date. I'm sure not very many, I, but I'm, I, it has to have happened. Yeah, oh yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised that it, uh, that blind dates would work out because, um. First of all, you're not staring, you're not like figuring out the person and like staring at their profile pictures or anything on Tinder. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe like I'm not into this person or like reading their profile uh, info and being like, like from dating apps and such. Yeah. And being like, oh, mm, I don't know if I like this, this person's point of view on this, even though that stuff might not even matter to the person at all. It's just something they wrote down. So blind, you, you're, you're literally going in blind. It could work out. I could see it working out, but. That completely, uh, the, the dating apps and the fact that we have so much social media driving things these days kind of eliminates the, the possibility of having a blind date, though, because you can do your research beforehand. I think the, I think the closest I've had to uh, having a blind date is I did date one person who I actually met. This is going to sound crazy. You like the juicy stuff for the, for the stream. So why, why not? I yeah. actually, I uh, dated somebody I met in a, a video game called VR Chat. Where you're completely in VR. Oh and my you're, god! Yeah, uh, she actually even like flew down and hung out, and she was Whoa. pretty cool and stuff. Where was yeah. she from? Uh, up in Washington. Whoa! So, yeah, it was actually it was it was cool for a while, but uh, but it, it got a little weird. Whoa! That's all I'll say. But, but wait, it was, I, well, what happened? I mean, we spoke for a long period of time. Like we dated for a bit, and then we just cut it off. But why? Why did it get weird though? uh it just got weird i'm just gonna leave it there <laughs> i mean we we, we want to know it's like i mean i'm not i'm not gonna press you you know if you don't if you're not comfortable talking about it but it's like one of those situations like you met this person from states away online they yeah. came down in real life to meet you what was that situation like what was it like when you met her for the first time in person um i mean that's a nerve-wracking experience because even though you've seen pictures and stuff online it dude it could have been like a 50 year old man for all i know yeah. actually no no because i she had one of those voices, which would have been great she had one of those voices that was just like dude there's no way uh like you guys and then we used the video, well we used the video chat on discord all the time too like okay. that was like our hangout every day so i knew it wasn't like 
I don't know. It was it was more shocking to see how short she was, I guess. She for me, a lot of people think I look short when I'm on camera like this, but I'm six foot two. And then she looked tall when she was on camera like this, but she was like she was like up to here on me. So like the five foot two or something. Yeah, it's all it's the all the way that it's framed. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, uh, so we, we talked about Olivia Wilde, you know, that's your, your real life person that you would like to meet. Uh, conversely, which fictional character would you most enjoy a team up with? Who, like a team up, like a, like an adventure or something or what could, kind of team? Could be an adventure. Could be as simple as hanging out. Okay. Uh, fictional character. Who would an be adventure a requires a lot of, a lot of effort. Like what, like, you know, in real life, if someone asks you, they're like, we have to, we have to destroy the reactor to save planet earth you'd be like dude i have to like i'm going to wendy's tonight but if i if i chose like master chief from halo there's not a lot of work i have to do he's just like come with me we're going on an adventure i'm like all right cool i'll bring the camera that's it that's like go. all i have to do he's uh, just like i mean <laughs> what encapsulates that that agreement by the way he's like i need you to record my adventure i'd be like i'd literally be like can i post it to my youtube that's all i care about yeah yes yeah, yeah sure just don't let me get shot that's it um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fictional character. God, I didn't expect any of these questions. Uh, frick, who would I want to team up with? Let's see. I'm trying to think of, dude, you know, no, that would be kind of lame. And I was going to say doom guy would be a dope person just to hang out with, but then he would just kill everybody. That'd doom, be, uh, doom guy. Yeah. Doom guy. That would be awful. That's just is that like basically it's like I mean I played the Doom games but it's like the Rock is that is the Rock the Doom guy from Doom did you see the Doom movie? Oh God! We don't know what the we don't know what the, we don't know who the Doom guy is. No, like on the the most recent game, he I actually speaks for the first time in the most recent game. Doom Eternal. Uh, in a, yeah, Doom Eternal. He speaks in it, and then at the subtitles at the bottom it just says Doom guy, and then it has his stuff. So oh. his his official name is Doom guy. Okay. So. Yeah, and then there's this whole backstory. Ching. Ching. I know too much about video games. Um, or maybe you know just enough. Just enough. Yeah, being a I wealth would, of uh, knowledge about anything is a, is a great thing, I think. I don't know. Like, who would I... Who? You know who'd be cool to hang out with? Constantine. John Constantine. I love, I love paranormal stuff. I'd love to see all that kind of... Like, anything online, movie-wise, or anything, uh, I love... I don't know why that popped in my head. I would love to hang out and be uh, uh, Shia LaBeouf, basically, in the movie. <laughs> Just hang out and watch all these demons get fucked up. That'd be um, pretty dope. So is there – it's my understanding that, yeah, uh, Justice League Dark, who – I mean, John Constantine is a big part of Justice League Dark, uh, is coming as a show to HBO. That should be pretty awesome. I actually saw, I don't know if it's the same show, but I've been on YouTube, I've been getting like recommended a lot of clips with uh, John Con Constantine from some animation and stuff. Oh. There's one. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where it's from, though. There I don't know a, if he had his own show. There was a new Justice League Dark movie that just came out. So it's probably from that? It came out this last year. It was pretty good. It was super gritty. I mean, oh, you, okay. wouldn't, you wouldn't expect it. It was, um, God, what was it called? It was called Doom, I think. Um bear with me but yeah i really enjoyed it i'm one thing that dc does right is they have uh their animations and they're fantastic oh yeah their animations are top tier all the time it's because people actually read the source material yeah <laughs> so i think that they have a uh, yeah they have some people that uh it's apocalypse war i apocalypse believe war. justice okay. league dark apocalypse war so Apocalypse. Is that the one with Dark Side comes in, or yeah, 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 it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. So It's the second. It's the sequel to the first Justice League Dark film, and both are really quite good. Would recommend yeah. if you haven't seen them. Uh, what's your top tier fast food? Top tier fast food. Uh, uh, mm, I don't know. Is pizza considered fast food? Absolutely. No. Is it? Pizza, Is it? It depends on what kind of pizza, right? But. The thing is, yeah, because I I would say Peter Piper is my is my favorite. I'm I've been very very sad because Peter Piper I found out is is a branch off from Chuck E. Cheese. They it's the same company that owns Peter Piper and Chuck E. Cheese, 
and Chuck E. Cheese is going bankrupt. So I feel like there's a chance we may lose Peter Piper. I mean, why do you? Why is that your favorite? I don't know why. It's just a flavor. It's uh, I think it's a sauce or something. I can't get enough of it. Uh, I think it, last year I did – there was like a peach, pizza day, National Pizza Day, and huh. I just went to Peter Piper and I ordered like four pizzas, Whoa. played a bunch of pizza-based video games and just ate a bunch of pizza the whole time. Wow. It was great. So it was a fun time. Peter Piper Pizza <laughs> is quite niche. Uh, for anyone that's not located in the Southwest, there are only yeah. locations in Arizona, California, New Mexico, Texas, and Mexico. Um, Chuck E. Cheese, of course, is everywhere. And I, I believe that Chuck E. Cheese was originally developed as a side project from someone that worked at Atari. But I might be... Really? Yeah, yeah. Don't quote me on that. I believe that that's, uh, that's the case, though. Peter Piper Pizza is owned by Chuck E. Cheese, though. Wow. Oh, it's owned by Apollo Capital Management, which is kind of an umbrella company. So Yeah, that just... It's an option. like with those news... Yeah. These people were like, was we got to get into the, the pe- whatever the pizza gaming empire is. We got to pick them up right venture yeah, capitalist grab this one grab this one yeah. but if, i mean if that company goes under there's a chance that like i'm sure it wouldn't rock all the peter pipers that there'd still be franchises probably still yes. stay open kind of like blockbuster there's still a blockbuster open the world's last blockbuster yeah and they've got like all kinds of attitude they like talk shit to people oh yeah their twitter is amazing i love it <laughs> on the on the you know and then there's wendy's twitter who is also equally as savage but they have many locations I feel um, like I feel like Wendy's Twitter has dumbed down a bit. There was there was some kind of drama not too long ago, and somebody really called out Wendy's, and I really haven't seen them be savage ever since. They like it's fired weird. their their savage PR social media manager, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're like you're weak. Get out. <laughs> they were like, dude, you couldn't stand up to this this teenager. What's the deal? Maybe they were out for the weekend and they got sick or something. I have a, a a Chuck E. Cheese down the street, but you can't go to Chuck E. Cheese unless you're accompanied by a child. Is that correct? That's correct. Also, um, during quarantine, when I was at, stuck being at home for a month and a half, like work shut down everything, uh, I didn't want to go to grocery stores. This is like the height of COVID. Right. So I was I was ordering a lot of like DoorDash and stuff. Uh-huh. And I noticed that there was a weird pizza company on my DoorDash. It was like um, Cabanelli's Pizza or something like that. I I don't – Cabanelli's Pizza? I also read an article that Cabanelli or whatever the name is is the name of the the mascot chef from um, Chuck E. Cheese, and they were changing their name on the app to Cabanelli's Pizza so people would actually order their pizza. Whoa. What the fuck? So technically it wasn't false advertising because it was the name of the, the mascot. Is the pizza that, good? I can't remember. No. I haven't had Chuck E. Cheese since I was probably six or seven years old, you know. A- after that whole... The place is a cesspool. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, they, <laughs> there, was that, there was that whole thing where they were saying they were recycling, like, pizza slices. Oh, no! <laughs> That's why, like, the pizza slices never match up and stuff if you ever no. get one. Oh. It, they they never mat- match up. It's oh. almost like they there's, like, even gaps. Oh. So, like, they take other ones and put them in. Dude. Pizza is yeah, one of so, like the, mo- the the lowest cost food items oh, to yeah. prepare, and for a company to recycle slices of pizza is just fucking reprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with companies like uh, Little Caesars just throwing pizzas out for five bucks. These guys have to try and recycle stuff. Little Caesars <laughs> does not recycle pizza slices. That's hot. no, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying Little Caesars doesn't. Right. So it it kind of like belittles. Chuck E. Cheese even more because Chuck E. Cheese pizza is probably like ten bucks. It's like a might as well just get Pizza Hut or Domino's. And you're paying so you're paying ten dollars really mostly for the experience though of going to the the germ infested ball pits and you know that some kid just peed in and there's I a, heard ball pits were uh, like banned in most places. What before COVID? Yeah, why? Uh, I, I I heard a thing a long time ago. They were taking them out because they were such like germ cesspools disgusting like mcdonald's doesn't have them they used to have them all the time yeah they took them out of uh the restaurants and i i think Chuck E. cheese might have done that well i'm really glad that i experienced that growing up but also it was not good (laughs) no i mean it wasn't even that fun you like dive into it once go underneath cover your face with balls and then that sounds off awful (laughs) 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 out of context and then you just jump out and scare a kid or something like 
that's literally <laughs> you the, made it the, seem like you're an adult doing this you just jump out and scare a kid <laughs> but you're also a child i mean yeah 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 it's a, imagine otherwise I, you're not gonna you're not gonna fit in a tiny ball pit ball pits seem endless when you're a child but when you're an adult it's like ankle high so. we need a we need like an adult adult style ball pit where it's like literally 30 feet deep and you can just like die I mean, they kind of have those. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever go to one of those trampoline parks, they have those foam pits, which is basically the same thing. Dude, they're just like a big cube of foam that you jump into. I understand that trampolines become exponentially more dangerous for you as an adult because your bones are less flexible. So there are so many people that go into these trampoline parks. And correct me if I'm wrong. This may be, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to to slander any trampoline parks or or yeah. you know the, the process because some people may be oh, hey i'm a professional trampoliner and i don't want you to <laughs> to talk shit about my my passion but how dare you yeah how dare you download but um so yeah post in the comments if i'm incorrect but uh it's my understanding that adults go to these places and if you're not extremely well versed in trampolining y- you could very well end up walking out or you know crutching out of there with a fucking broken leg or yeah i mean a lot of people break bones on those things i mean i i went to one not too long ago because they opened one here not not too far away and i just wanted to check it out and uh went was it just friends. so fun it was fun but i did walk out with a limp but not because of like bones or anything it was just i was jumping around in in a place that didn't have very they had swamp coolers not ac and it was like starting to become summer i think it was like last year yeah so i was just exhausted and my muscles, muscles I haven't used in forever were being used. So I was just sore and feeling old at the, for the most part. But I didn't break or sprain anything. I love that they're called swamp coolers, by the way. Yeah. That is like. Just, <laughs> they just sound awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basic, that's exactly what I was going to say. It just sounds like, oh, yeah, just turn on that cooler that we use in the swamp. This is my other character voice for today. That's it. Just the, <laughs> Just the hick that doesn't care. (laughs) Yeah, the the redneck that doesn't care. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I think the other name is Vaporative Cooler. Yeah, yeah, but swamp. it's a swamp cooler, though. It's what we use for the gators. We use them for all them (laughs) gators in there. Turn on that there swamp cooler. The gators are getting hot. Every swamp cooler has a gator inside of it. It comes with a free charge. Yeah, well, actually, that would just be uh, an added incentive because you really want those alligators when you buy the swamp cooler adds a little extra scent to the air especially you know? in the desert you know you want to keep that gator out in your front yard and nothing works it's you could have a guard dog or you could have a guard gator tell me which one you'd prefer to to have a, a thief run up against right well I'd, I'd probably guard dog if i had a guard gator and a swamp cooler because most of our swamp coolers are on the roof and that's not really going to protect me too much right. unless i have like a, a leaping gator coming off my my roof or something yeah these are leaping gators so okay yeah 100 percent gator yeah they're, yeah. Le- they're leaping <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've covered some of the bases let's jump into the true meat of the show we talked about gators gators love meat now here we go this isn't the first time that you've joined me on a podcast as you mentioned nope. you were a guest on my first venture through macro records the macro cast can you tell us a bit about what's new with watch out loud now i understand the whole brand has experienced a serious makeover of late yeah so um i'd say about 11 months ago like i was streaming for a while uh i came to the conclusion I need to step away from streaming uh, because streaming was was hitting such a a bad situation where the only way to become successful was to be very cookie cutter, mm-hmm. play games, interact with a very fake attitude and oh hey, oh welcome to the stream, blah blah blah. Like all this it was it was very cookie cutter. Everybody was doing it. I click on anybody's stream on on Twitch. Uh, it was all the same. I hated it. It was it was killing me inside to, to even stream. So I stepped away. I decided to live life for a bit, figure things out. I uh, stepped away for about 10 to 11 months. And then about 9, 10 months in, I started coming back to Twitch just to watch people. And I started seeing that a lot of people were kind of doing what I was doing back then on stream. You know, like the crazy ideas and stuff. Yeah. Like going beyond their comfort zone and and stuff and it was really working for people and i was like all right i think this is a good time for me to come back to twitch and and so i decided to come up with some crazy ideas and 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 come back to twitch kind of reduce my schedule a little bit until i get back into the flow of things and and start doing some crazy stuff 
as you can tell by uh, lack of hair right now. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, c- coming back in, though, you would say, I, how, are, how are you hitting this differently, is my question. You know, because you've done this. You said that people are doing crazy stuff. You were doing crazy stuff before. But, uh, you know, you and I have talked a bit off of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About, you know, how, how is it that you're attacking this now? So what I realize when it comes to streaming, uh, instead of YouTube, is YouTube is usually like a 10-minute short period of time-based thing to keep people's attention. I found when you stream, you're streaming four to eight hours. You're streaming for a long period of time. How do you keep those people in the stream? I decided that the best way to keep people in the stream is a thing called stakes. And I'm not talk- talking about T-bones or anything. It's about uh, things Just mailing like people did- stakes. Yeah, just sending people <laughs> ribeyes and T-bones. And, uh, but no, uh, adding stakes to the stream, something where you have some kind of challenge for yourself or for the viewers, and there's something on the line. Like, for example, I had to beat Minecraft hardcore mode within one sitting. If I didn't do it, I had to shave my head. We can see how that went. Yeah. Uh, along with that, people could donate or send bits to spawn stuff in the game to kill me the entire time. So I had people who would normally just pop into the stream staying for the full nine hours. That's that's nine hours of their life that they decided to stick around and see what was going to happen next. And I, I mean, that's that's somebody like we have a limited amount of time on on the planet. So I felt like if I always feel like if somebody's going to stick around and give me that much of their time just watching me, it better be worth it. It better be entertaining. Yeah. It better be. I mean, that we're content creators. It sh- there should be content. It shouldn't just be playing video games. If you want to watch somebody play video games and just com- commentate every now and then, go to your friend's house and watch them play Halo 4 or something. Yeah, we've like, kinda, we're kind of past that now, right? It's been done. Yeah, it's Old been hat. done. And, and, and so that's why you see a lot on Twitch. There's a lot more people doing things like um, that, that aren't video game based. Or if they are video game, ba- video game based, uh, there, there's more to it, you know? There's, like I said, stakes. I see a lot of people adding stakes to things, and people love that. They they eat it up. It's almost like a drama or something like that. They never know how it's going to come out. It, right. It's it's phenomenal. It's a lot of fun to do, too. So where did you where did you first hear about this idea or this concept? Or is it something that you kind of came up with yourself? Or, you know, I mean, did well, you see someone else kind of doing it, and you were like, man, I could attack this in my own way? Well, I've always I've always done it on stream, and I right. think you were even there for some of it. I did the hot pepper streams where people insane. could donate. Yeah. The team pepper donate for tw- team pepper. That's one minute for me not drinking milk. Team milk one minute towards me drinking. I've always done that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I'd always been kind of held backish on it because it wasn't getting the the most amount of views. In fact, one of my biggest streams in the past was me dressing up in an inflatable T Rex costume because I had this whole bit where I was going to show that T-Rexes were the 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 apex predator that even <laughs> even in modern times so I tried to do a bunch of modern day things in a T-Rex costume with the little arms like make a sandwich paint a painting all this other stuff change a light bulb out of a tall light all this <laughs> stuff and literally like two people showed up and I put so much effort and money and work into this thing and then after that I just kind of went back to the cook- cookie cutter cuz I realized like Twitch just wasn't really ready for it. So, so you found that to be kind of a, uh, it, it demotivated you to some degree. Oh yeah. Even I, though that was like kind of, it really was the right direction for you to be going in. Oh yeah. I mean, even though what it was, was the takeaway, just... like it, what was the takeaway from that? I mean, like, do you kind of wish that you would have stuck with it and just like you, you only oh. you saw that you did it and you only had two viewers. So I know the feeling. I for a lot of people who start out streaming, they only have a couple viewers and like yeah, still, yeah, yeah. it's like you dedicated so much to it you're like, why should I continue doing this? Even though now, if I, I'm sure if you would have stuck with it, more people would have caught on, you know? Well, another another big aspect with that was I was starting, I, I'd been doing it for about six years now, and I had started to kind of mentally get burnt out, especially with the repetitiveness of it and everything. Yeah. So I don't regret stepping away for, from stream for almost a year because that gave me a lot of time to reflect and just figure things out. Um, and I have just... I have no, like a whole notebook full of ideas that I, I came up with that I was originally going to do for YouTube, um, which is another different thing that I'm doing with my stream, um, is I am now doing a thing where at the beginning of each stream, I kind of bring on this YouTube voice and I, I'm like, what's going on, everybody? Here we go. Today, this is what we're doing. 
and then I kind of say what we're doing, put it all together, and then we do like the crazy stuff on stream. Uh, that way I can take that footage, edit it, put the best moments into it, and then a week later upload it to uh, to YouTube. Because you also you don't want to upload it the next day because then what's the point of watching the stream if you're just going to get the b best moments uh, so, over on YouTube? Yeah, so the logic behind going full force on both platforms is kind of like being a little bit incestuous with your content and like hitting both things uh, simultaneously. Yeah. 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 So it's like adding stakes, which works with YouTube, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm playing games or I'm baking blindfolded or I'm doing anything like that, uh, or I'm trying every flavor of Oreo or something like that. I, I, there's so many things I could do. Um, it works with YouTube. It works with Twitch in the long run. And, um, I feel like that's really the, 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 the situation that I needed to figure out is to find something that worked for a long period of time on stream, but would easily be able to take away from and make it into a YouTube video at the exact same time. Because uh, then there's two different environments that will then probably uh, collide into a community. So you mentioned, you know, trying every flavor of Oreo. Um, I've seen a lot <laughs> of other YouTubers do this, like ProZD, for instance. Uh, your channel offers much of what viewers may have seen creators do before, but with your own twist to it. Uh, yeah. So for instance, like I said, you know, we've seen video game cre creators do, or excuse me, uh, video game streamers do playthroughs and commentary, so on and so forth. But I think uh, as with any creator, it's your unique personality that makes your content shine. So oh, yeah. that being said, what would you say is the overall message that you hope to convey with what you're doing with your brand and, and your streams and your work? Is, is, Best thing I can say to people is if I ever become resident sleeper or if I ever become just boring at all, stop watching me. Uh, that's what I thrive to be. I thrive to be entertaining. That's all I really care about. Uh, I do hope to make money from it. That way I can pay to do bigger and better things uh, on stream. I have a bunch of ideas. They're just really expensive to do, renting buildings out and all this other stuff. I have some crazy ideas. That's really the only reason why I want to make money on Twitch uh, and also to survive on it so I can put more time into it. But yeah, honestly, if I'm ever boring, just stop watching me. Uh, that, that really, like if I see less viewers, that means to me that there's something I need to put a little bit extra effort into. I just love entertaining. It's content. It's supposed to be entertaining. That's the whole purpose of content is to be enjoyable. Um, and no matter what kind of content I'm making, um, I just got to keep pushing towards making sure it's the most entertaining that I uh, I can possibly be. Right. So. so you want to entertain people. Uh, let's go yeah. a little bit deeper with that, though. Uh, what is your you know your motivation behind that? It's it's just something I've always kind of had deep inside of me. Like I've I've been in high school. I would make jokes in class. I was kind of not like a humongous class clown, but I I, I would I, I made comics in class or like all the time showing the people I just liked making content. It's just something that makes me personally happy. Um, but also with the fact that like what I'm doing is still in it, I would say it's infant stage, uh, with people adding stakes and making good content. I hope that stuff that I make kind of picks up a little bit because it'll show other people not to be scared to go out of their comfort zone and, and out of this cookie cutter. And, uh, and we could see Twitch kind of evolve into a much, more wide range, more interesting uh, platform than just somebody playing Fall Guys or the, the, the biggest or Valorant or whatever the big game is right now or Fortnite. Uh, because I would so love to, to, to go to Twitch and literally just click on a random streamer and just sit there and laugh because it's just the crazy entertainment. Um, and you don't get a lot of that uh, on Twitch, even today, even though there's a lot of people doing it. That's that's what I kind of hope to get from it is a lot of people just seeing that it I guess in a way works or that it's enjoyable and then um, hopefully they uh, they personally aren't too scared to go out of their comfort comfort zone and and what they believe in and then they go for it. So you invite people to attack it from their end, kind of uh, with you as the inspiration or as a proof of concept for whatever it is that you're doing. I mean, like with them putting yeah. their own their, their own twist on it as well. I mean, it's kind of a chain oh, of of uh of inspiration if you will uh what's the most difficult hurdle when it comes to building a fan base online that you've experienced uh, my my biggest hurdle is definitely uh networking and social media i'm awful at it i'm i've always been awful i even have a discord uh my discord 
died long ago. In fact, I'm about to reopen a new Discord since my last one died so bad and br try and bring everybody I can over and try and start keeping up with that, which is kind of like a forum kind of Skype type thing. Yeah, you do have um, a dedicated fan base, though. I mean, there are people oh, who yeah. have been watching Watch Out Loud for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, so. um, when I came back, what was it, a week, two weeks ago? Um, yeah, somebody came in that has followed me since 2013. And wow. they were, like, hanging out in all of my streams and stuff. Seven so. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven years of wa of, of, of being a watcher. Yeah, That's exactly. That's pretty substantial. Um, as someone who built their fan base, you know, fundamentally off of gaming, do you have any major criticisms of video game creators currently? Like, based off, like, what kind of games they're making or anything? Sure. Uh, like Is there the anything thing... that irks you, you know? Yeah, too many battle royales. I'm I'm so sick of them. I'm so sick of people. It it's what bothered me when it came to Twitch. This whole cookie cutter platform. I understand it. If it's working, there's going to be other people that are going to do it. But we had, I think it started with Daisy Battle, uh, was it Battlegrounds or something? And then, um, and then H1Z1, and then Fortnite came out, and then there's Valorant, and then now Call of Duty has one, and now. There's the one that's Fall Guys. Fall Guys is kind of fun though. What 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 is a battle royale but for for the uninitiated? It's literally, it's uh it's like a mass group of people going into a map, usually getting dropped into a map or something, and it's uh last one standing wins. So, so it's like it's going in. Is Fortnite kind of one of those situations? Or? Yeah, yeah. Fortnite is a hundred percent a battle uh, battle royale. So it's go get weapons and just shoot everybody until you're the last one standing. So it's it's very. I'm not a com competitive person right. for the most part when it comes to video games. Um, and I don't know. Those games just seem so boring to me. They seem so boring. And I, I'm scared that uh, game developers are terrified to to go away from that because they're still so popular. That's why I really like indie, uh, indie game developers because they go out of their comfort zone. I'm really big on the whole out of your comfort zone because that's where the good prime shit comes from. It's I the cash grab. Guys, I yeah, just yeah. I want to apologize to y'all because the sunshine is flowing in right here and I'm so <laughs> white. I am I just can, noticed that. I am a ghost. You can barely <laughs> see my face. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm I'm really sorry about that. If you can't I'll try to There is that that's like a little bit better. I mean, whatever. We're here for you. We're not here for me. Um, okay. <laughs> so I touched on this with Gutex uh, in episode one. I'd also like to get your perspective. Uh, aside from content creation, do you spend any time digesting content on YouTube purely as a consumer? And do you have any favorite uh, channels right now? Absolutely. I don't even have cable or uh, I don't even have Netflix right now because there's no Netflix series that, have, that are out that I haven't seen already. Uh, so I do have a big screen TV in my, in my, uh, living room. And it's strictly to like hook up my phone to it and watch YouTube videos. Uh, I watch a lot of, uh, Ludwig. He's actually one big streamer. I kind of look up to, uh, he does all his streams are exactly what I was talking about before. Super entertaining. He puts them on YouTube. Um, German nine, eight, five. He's the same way. A lot of people I watch live stream and then, uh, and then upload their stuff to YouTube, and I'll usually watch it because I don't sit at my computer usually too, too much. Um, some other stuff, I love watching uh, Endings Explained, like found flicks and stuff for uh, horror movies. I watch I that like too. Watch yeah. So if there's ever a movie I'm not too sure about, I'll watch found flicks. I'm like, oh, you know, because they don't give, like, you just show screen grabs, so you don't get, like, the whole movie. So you're like, oh, well, this sounds good, so you can stop it and then go rent the movie and stuff. It's such a bizarre uh, concept watching those those videos because it's just ha like having a friend that you nerd out with about the the backstory oh, yeah. and and the bits of you know I've even watched like things that you missed in Avengers things that yeah. you missed and you know uh I, what is the most like left field content that you uh, consume on on YouTube left field yeah for oh, instance wow. there's a there's so... a series that I watch where a guy goes into mines. Okay, okay, so I <laughs> just recently, this has showed up on my recommended while scrolling through, and I can't stop watching it because it freaks me out. It's it's literally guys um, climbing into, like, caves, but they're, like, this, like, the holes in them are, like, this big. And yeah. they have, like, the claustrophobic stuff. Uh, I, dude, it terrifies me, but I can't stop watching. Is that, I've watched, uh, like, four in a row. Is that, like, those, are, are they are they scuba diving? 
or is no, it? No, they're just they're just like spelunky. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah. Because I would never want to do that myself. Like yeah, I think that that's well fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like the best, some of the best content on YouTube right now is living vicariously through these other people. There's this other series that I like to watch too, where these guys are. It's fucking. And in my mind, it's just like, oh my, like, whoa, this is so brilliant. How did I not think of this? But these guys go into rivers and you know bodies of water and they scuba dive there. Yes, and they find yes. shit. Okay, so you've been watching YouTube the same time as me because I just, I literally yesterday no it was day before yesterday i got that on my recommended and it's like found a gun underwater found a bomb city was uh, evacuated it's so good uh, yeah it's good and then there was one where like they they went underneath and were grabbing people's legs and stuff to freak them out <laughs> like just going boop boop and then putting up a freak uh, like a fake crocodile head up up at the surface uh and freaking people out but yeah i don't know why those are showing up in my recommended but i can't stop watching them um, maybe it's because it's just blowing up. Like, I don't, I don't know I, the, how I got introduced to, I'm going to try to find this guy's channel. Um, yeah. oh yeah. Okay. So it's, it's Dalmid, D-A-L-L-M-Y-D. And how I got introduced to this guy was through watching a YouTube video where he's over at the park. That's right by my house, MacArthur park, which is notorious for being dangerous and for the, the bodies of water, they're being filled with weapons and other other crazy bullshit. So he's there with Stevo from Jackass and found Wild Boys. Scooter. Yeah, they found uh, they found knives. They found mm-hmm. a bunch of shit, and they were like trying to find murder weapons. And it's like, okay, you're throwing knives into a body of water. Like you know that that shit was y- used nefariously. Yeah. Like, who the fuck is throwing a knife away into a body of water? Like they also find a ton of iPhones, a ton a lot of, of burner expensive phones. watches. Like a lot of burner phones though. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, you have to, it, it, it begs the question. It kind of gets your mind going. Like why were these things thrown away? You know, like uh, what, or how much money are they making for finding these Rolexes underwater? You know, I mean, that's fucking cool. Some of them, I kind of question if they're real or not, because there, there was one episode he came out with where he pulled a prank on a friend where they're using like a magnet. I saw that. They're they're pulling up grenades and then they pulled, it it was there. I didn't see that one. They're like, they would pull it up and the guy's freaking out because they pulled up like six grenades or something. And he's like, what the, what, do we call somebody? And they're like, no, these are paperweights. So you see the hole at the bottom. But then there's another episode where he goes under and he finds claymores and like a trigger thing that, at the bottom. Uh-huh. And he starts freaking out and then he calls like his army vet. And he's like, is this real and stuff? And he's like, oh, no, it's just a it's just a prop. It's not real. I feel like that was kind of maybe set. What are the chances of finding a prop claymore? Yeah, why would someone throw that away? Or lose with it? With a trigger. Yeah, why would someone do that? Yeah. What's the logic yeah, behind it, that? It feels like some of them are a little set up, so. That that makes it kind of sad, but I mean, also, it, you think if you think about it, it's like, okay, I, I understand why they're doing that. They're getting millions upon millions of plays per video, so like, how do you yeah. – maybe you're just not going to find something every single time. Um, so you, you have to – they kind of manipulate it. I don't know. I mean, maybe like it real, is legit. reality TV. Though. Yeah. But like, I have found – I watched a video where he, uh, they, 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 he like, spent a week making a fucking treasure chest and, like, put it underwater, and he took his friend down to find, find it. And it was, oh. like, full of fake gems and shit. So they were like, whoa, how much is this worth? It's, we're going to be so rich. And the guy was, like, freaking out. And they were like, dude, it's fake. We just, I'm sorry. We spent the week, like, making the box. And we just wanted to, to do that. That's kind of dick move. But I also saw another video where he hooked his homie up with a fucking brand new jet ski. And the dude was, like, crying. And it's, maybe that was also, like, a little, I don't know. I mean. Yeah, I mean, like, that's I like was going to say, like, the whole treasure chest. Such an I autograph. Like that's. that's that, that's a week that they couldn't find anything. So they, they're like, all right, let's do this idea that I have backed up. And that kind of works with like faking the other ideas yeah. or something. I don't know. It, 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 it it's is... almost like storage wars. Cause storage wars was uh, a lot of it was fake. A really? Lot of it was, yeah. Yeah. But it's, I understand that you can go to storage facilities and like purchase. I mean, you probably mostly are going to find junk. No, the stuff they found in there, like the crazy stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, one of the guys came from the show and said, yeah, they, they, uh, they, they placed a lot of that stuff in there before they wow. opened it. What a yeah. fucking crock of bullshit. Uh, and then, the, like, the episode where the dude, not not Storage Wars, but what I was just talking about, where he gives his yeah. friend a, 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 a Sea-Doo or, or a, a jet ski or whatever. It's kind of, like, almost equivalent to when those people go out on the street and they're, like, hooking homeless people up with $100. And it's, I like, think videos it's, like I, that. I, I, I think mean, it's that's, a little different. 
That's cool. Than giving like a homeless but, person money on camera than giving like your friend something that he's excited about. So. But but it's like it's like, I mean, you're still putting the video up. Yeah. Instead of just doing but then, it. But then I'm sure the video is kind of paying for it as well. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, get that. So I'm just saying, there's like it feels kind of like. What? If I was the friend that got it, I wouldn't mind. I'd be like, yeah, post that. I want to like show my friends this video and stuff. So. As long as the friend's okay with it, I feel like it's okay. I'd be fucking, you'd be stoked about it. Um, yeah. Okay, so we kind of, we've tangented yet again. That's what the show is about. We're all about oh, tangents. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pull it back for one second and ask you, who do you think the most outrageous personality in gaming or streaming is right now? Outrageous. Yeah. Uh, outrageous in a bad way? No, I mean. Say, it, no, no, no. Oh, okay. I, I was going to get different uh uh, situations outrageous in a bad way it's a streamer called i i absolutely despise him because uh I, i'll explain it in a bit but his Throwing name is shade. gross 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 gore and i'm sure if he hears about this he'll tweet a video because he does that all the time all he does is come up with fake clout and and post videos and yell at people and scream uh just because he's irrele- irrelevant nowadays and it, it's so it's so Oh my God. Some people go through like some actual serious problems and he just turns it into all about him. Tells people to box him for it. And I was I'd like, I hate this. Well, hate is a strong word. I just strongly dislike this gross gore guy. Grossy so. gore. Yeah. Grossy gore. Okay. Um, he does, he does rant videos and stuff. Well, uh, he does. He used to game a lot and stuff like that, but now he just, he does cooking streams and he just rants the whole time and screams about Twitter drama. Huh. And it's just, ah, uh, it's just awful, dude. Uh, but crazy, when it comes in a good aspect, I would say um, German 985. I think he is such a crazy, I look up to him hugely. His his humor is so out there and, like, I think he, he did one where he, he put together an entire carnival and had a robot arm that would throw balls, and the chat could move the arm left and right within 10 seconds, and if they made it, they got a prize. He had, like, all this stuff. Um, yeah, I think Jerma985 is probably the best crazy streamer. It's J-A-R-M- J-E-R-M-A. I thought it was German. but Yeah, no, Ger- yeah Jerma985 has the, the little J with the mouth on it, green how, background. How, how new is this guy? Oh, he's been around for a while. He has. Yeah. Wow. How interesting. He's absolutely if you've if you've never checked him out, I would definitely suggest uh checking German nine eight five out. It's always an entertaining ride. So I've touched on this a little bit about uh excuse me, a little bit in the past couple of episodes, but I'm honestly super hyped about it, which is why I keep bringing it up. Uh we've seen the Final Fantasy Seven remake, which left some folks feeling lukewarm and wanting despite the beautiful interpretation. There's a new oh, yeah. Crash Bandicoot on the way. Are there any franchises that you're super excited to see rise again soon? Yes, there's one. As you know, I love horror. Uh, and there's one horror game that I started with that probably one of the the biggest games that ever terrified me when I was in like my teens, like 15 and stuff. Amnesia, The Dark Descent. The new Amnesia game is coming out this year. That came uh, out when you were 15? I'd say like fifteen, sixteen. Whoa. The first Amnesia. Really? Yeah. So, dude. I remember I, I, I got introduced to that shit but and I'm I'm just probably super late to the party, but watching Markiplier yeah. play it. So Yeah, which well is probably I mean, years after I'm sure it came out. Well it's probably not like fifteen, it's probably like ten years ago, probably. Um so I might have been like close to seventeen, eighteen. So are they they remaking it or is it a new chapter? It's a new chapter. The trailer is amazing. It looks uh Frictional Games always makes great games. They made uh, uh, Soma, which was a really good game. Uh, they made, um, I mean, Machine for Pigs was all right, and then they made some other other games that were, were great. Other but, Outla- or uh, not Outlast, uh, other Amnesia games. There is. They're more branches off of the first one, and then um, Machine for Pigs is Amnesia Machine for Pigs. So it's it's more of that Cthulhu kind of Lovecraftian. Um, kind of horror yeah so. i didn't enjoy that one as much it was uh yeah that i didn't like that one because first of all your teeth wouldn't grind it sounds awful but your teeth wouldn't grind and you wouldn't lose your sanity in the darkness if you died you just spawned back like 30 seconds before you died so there was really no there was no reason to be scared of dying or anything like that that's that's where the real fear came from in amnesia one because you 
see the monster, you start chasing you, and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to like start all the way back here, right? Uh, if I get killed, when they take that away, it's the absolutely. the the um, what's it called? I, I guess the the risk is a little bit less tangible when yeah. uh, or less palpable when when that happens. Uh, it's weird to to think about the difference between horror films and horror games in that oh i that, love i love games so much more because you, i think most people feel that way yeah because you you are the character you're you're living that horror experience right uh, instead of watching somebody else and yelling at the other person like ah oh, don't go in there bitch you get that you get to finally say oh i'm not gonna go in there and then you don't go in there and you realize if you go in the other room that was even worse of a decision or something like you never know why are there so few horror games that are that are out that are like i mean we we don't see nearly enough horror games i feel like in the pipeline maybe it takes longer for them to produce them but there's like when they're great they're great right yeah i mean Uh, i would say i feel differently i feel um the gaming industry is really scared when it comes to making a triple a title uh horror game so the majority of horror games right now are indie based what why are they could you could you kind of expound on that why are they scared because a lot of horror games, so they don't, they don't become the next Jason movie or the next Freddy movie, which is, oh, this monster comes in, kills a bunch of kids, one last, and then there's a jump scare at the end. It's the same movie over and over again. If AAA uh, games, uh, game developers did that, it would basically be that. It would it would be the same kind of mechanics in the game, same kind of stuff. When it comes to indie indie developers, they like to add a new concept to the game. A new thing like, oh, you can hit a button suddenly – or you can use a relic and suddenly you go back five seconds. Maybe you can make a different decision, but it might be a worse decision. Or or um, like amnesia, like the fact that you lose your sanity just when your lantern goes out. Uh, stuff like that. Um, I, I feel like major game developers are scared to do that. Um they're, they're, maybe they're so focused on what's going to work that they don't take the risks in, in just doing, like, adding a simple mechanic that might make the game a little bit more interesting. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's the reason why we have, like, 35 Call of Duties and, like, Cause they, they, all that stuff. they just want the cash grab. I Honestly, you could show me gameplay of any Call of Duty. I couldn't tell you which one it is. And, and until, until, like, the 2005 ones or something, yeah, I'm going to see the graphics be like, oh, that's a little different. But the rest of them, I would not be able to tell you the difference. So is, no there, offense. is there a need for more Call of Duties? No. No. I don't think there is. I that's think a hot take. They, I think they did a good job. I think it's the – even though I don't like Battle Royales, I did watch uh, a friend of mine play the Battle Royale for Call of Duty. And the only reason I enjoyed it is because it's just a humongous map. And some people can just camp. It's almost like DayZ or something, but it's um, it didn't feel like a battle royale. It felt like it felt like a legitimate like military game where people are sometimes just sitting on a roof with a sniper and they're just sitting there for like five minutes straight, checking out other rooftops and looking for. It, I don't know. It felt better, but the generic Call of Duty games, I would say, no, nah, get like just start try something new because it's gonna you're gonna run out of them. Like you're gonna hit a point where people aren't gonna want to play it anymore. I it, mean, it, their last their last two trailers, no, it was last last two trailers uh, were the most disliked video game trailers of all time, I believe. Hmm. Because well, they just didn't look different. It's just more of the same. It kind of yeah. dilutes the genre pool from uh from from game to game, I suppose. But uh, it's it's kind of sad that that doesn't happen in the in the horror genre because. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, I guess when, when Hideo Kojima was still working with Konami, they put out uh, PT, right? Oh, and, uh, beautiful. Yeah, which no longer exists. You can't you can't play the game if you don't already have it previously downloaded anywhere, I suppose. Unless or maybe there's like you can get it from, from a port online or something rather. Well, but- no, <clears throat> somebody actually completely remade PT from top to bottom in uh, for PC, and you can even play it in VR now. Okay, but the the idea behind PT was that you know obviously playable trailer it was supposed to just yeah. get your get you like your your palette ready for what was going to be the new vision of Silent Hill, yeah, right, which would have been you know vastly more immersive, vastly more you know for you to sink your teeth into plot wise, and I'm sure it would have been more open world 
or something. Yeah, I mean, you can only imagine how. And then they came out with Death Stranding, right? Which is a total departure, and people I mean, it, and some people loved it. It was it was fun for a couple hours, and then it just became like I droned. I was like drooling, and my eyes were just dilated. I was like, what am I doing? But no, um, that brings my next point. I actually do realize a AAA uh, horror title that came out not, not recently, but not too long ago, but Resident Evil 7. That I feel like that is one of the, the, the best horror games from a AAA company to uh, ever come out. Who makes it's Resident whole... Evil? Uh, Capcom? Oh, okay. Well, maybe they just but... spend more time. Maybe they really give a fuck. Well, this Resident Evil is completely first-person based, and like there's actual jump scares, people busting through walls, and very up-close and personal feel. I mean, P- PlayStation even made a, a VR version of it. I mean, there's parts where like a girl takes your arm and grabs it at the beginning and like starts stabbing it with a like a screwdriver because she's infected and they took a whole different uh feel and it, it would have been i feel like that's what um pt or the new silent hills was going to be it was going to be something like that first person not that third tank controls or anything giving you because the first person is is really important when uh when it comes to horror games with me i don't want to be able to see what's on the side of me or anything I want to hear something, look, and suddenly something's there. That's where that fear and discomfort comes from. For sure. Uh, which franchises would you most like to see pull a phoenix and make a rise from the ashes for something that's just completely... Uh, <laughs> Isn't there ooh. a new Banjo-Kazooie? I think that there's something like that. Or, or there's a new Ratchet & Clank for sure that's coming out. Yeah, the Ratchet & Clank, uh, I think, has a female protagonist now uh, of the little cat character. Unless she's just like a side character, um, but that's a, again another continuation. Uh, it's not like Ratchet and Clank totally did a nosedive and disappeared for years. I'm talking about yeah. like you know like Sp- I think Spyro's been gone for a long time. No, they they did with Spyro the same thing they did with Crash Bandicoot. They brought it back uh, oh. remastered, fully remastered, and everything. I think they might have made a new game. I don't I don't keep up with uh, platforming games too much. Um, and then also you brought up Banjo Kazooie. They they did go off because Rare. Uh, disbanded right. the company Rare, uh, but then they opened up a Kickstarter and they made uh, Ukulele, which is the one with the lizard and the bat. So it's like a lizard and a big nosed bat. But that game is awful. They just made Banjo Kazooie has worked perfectly because everything was so close together and there was always something to do. Ukulele was the same thing, but there was just big gaps of nothing. It was like an open world, and it just didn't work. It's like they tried to add a little bit too much. Huh. Uh, but it was kind of a cool game. Um, I don't it's know. It's a tough what question. I... I mean, you yeah. have to consider which what what's a dead video game. Like, which one totally just stepped off the edge and disappeared? See, I don't want to give away spoilers, but I feel like everybody in the world already knows. Uh, there was one game. I could give you this answer. No problem if it wasn't for, like, three months ago. Uh I would have said Half Life. I would want the Half Life series to come back, and but, it did. Uh, and it did more ways than one, because the ending of Half Life, Alex. This doesn't give away the story to Half Life, Alex, but they do uh, confirm Half Life Three. They hundred percent. It's been around for some time at this point. I mean, we've seen there have been a multitude of streamers who have done playthroughs, and I mean, it's all over online. Oh yeah, so. I, I think even like news stations and stuff have, have have spoken about like the fact that i mean that's that was the biggest meme for the longest time like where's half-life 3 where's half-life 3 and then they literally confirmed half-life 3 in the video game it was crazy to have that confirmation in vr it was it was very nuts uh but when it comes to anything else you know what i would say silent hills i would love to see silent hills because silent hills is dead when's the last time we've gotten like a like a, a legitimate silent hills game that's right. That genre really creeped me out. It wasn't so much jump scary or anything, but it it just adds an uneasiness like the whole time. It was the overall so. aesthetic of and the artwork and everything kind of working oh, yeah. together to to paint this picture of of like you said uneasiness and dissonance. Yeah. And yeah, if it you know it would be great to see it kind of make a comeback in such a way that's refreshing and and captivating and you know oh, yeah, as absolutely. the Silent Hill genre, uh, franchise is. Uh, you're without a doubt, you know. Uh, someone that will do it for all the or excuse me do it all for the fans um from eating some of the world's hottest peppers as you previously mentioned to committing oh, yeah. to shave your head on stream uh to most recently baking the super mario 64 cake and slapping your face with a boatload of powdered sugar 
By the way, guys, uh, uh, I, I just want to say you, you need to follow Wes on his socials at Watch Out Loud. Uh, we'll do long form plugs at the end of the show, but that clip was hilarious. I'm curious, <laughs> what most excites you right now personally in regards to the content that you're pursuing? Um, just the content. I, it, it seems like such a simple answer, but honestly, after I finish the stream, when I do content like this, the first thing I go to is on Twitch. I go to my clips. I want to see what people have clipped. That shows me the best moments, and I usually post those moments. They're usually the best moments. In fact, from that stream, the baking stream you were talking about, there's like six other clips I wanted to post, but I didn't want to spam my Instagram account. Uh, that was just the one that made me laugh the most. I mean, I had an egg on my wall from – I was like I, – I made a joke. I was like, ha-ha, this is an egg, everybody. If somebody donates $10 right now, I'll smash this egg into this egg. And then literally 10 seconds went by, and $10 came in. I was like, fine and just <laughs> went all over the place um that's a that's a no. strange experience it is smack yeah. smashing eggs on your on your head yeah it's it, kind of well, like it a just... it's kind of like an entertainment monkey kind of situation but you you definitely have an understanding that that's you're totally cool with that like yeah. in, in that video you're like look at how much fucking sugar is on my desk and just like you don't think that it's gonna <laughs> happen but this dude smashes a whole pile of sugar into his face well, in that situation, I was like, how do I prove that how much sugar? Because uh, my friend was telling me uh, he was making a joke. He was like, oh, you're such a millennial, man. They're, like, you think a big mess is is actually just a little mess or something. And I was like, you know what? And I just grabbed the pile of sugar. And I was like, how do I show this to him? Because he's on a call with me. And I was like, screw it. And I just went, bam, because I was like, boom, that's going to be entertaining. And then I can make a moment out of it. Uh, and of course, you can hear him laughing his ass off. And then they turned it into a whole joke like, notice me. Well, it was like a cake to the face moment, you know, but yeah. Uh, and I'm sure that there are other streamers and and YouTubers that are doing this kind of stuff. Like Lord knows LA Beast has been doing this kind of shit for a while. Like LA, he just, I mean, at this point is he fucking tortures himself on like, you know, Oh yeah. That guy will drink an entire boot full of just jello or like, I don't know if that's an actual thing that he did. He eats cactuses, cacti. I don't yeah. know. LA uh, Beast is a, is a beast. That guy's what? insane. Yeah. Oh yeah. One point I will make, though, I will never do the whole dance monkey situation. Like, somebody donates to me, like, hey, go get your ketchup and pour it all over your head or something. I'd like, if somebody demands me to do something, I won't do it. If, I, if I'm if i okay with doing something, I'll just do it. Um, like, well, you I, presented the situation to begin with. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't like yeah. they told you to go to go and do that shit. Like, shoe on head, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've... I've been around Twitch uh, when 4chan was was raiding Twitch and, and saying like one two three, uh, one two three door giveaway, which I don't know what stupid joke that was. And then hey, put a shoe on your head, shoe on head. I, I never did that. I thought it was the dumbest thing. Like I'm I'm here to entertain and do things that make me happy. I'm not here to do what you're saying. Like I don't know you. Right. Like I'm not gonna do stuff because of that so i would never do something because somebody told me to do it, i i so. will say i think that shoe on head was pretty funny i think that that's like it just yeah. it just goes to show some people will do anything you know and and i think that that's a, a, a pretty bold statement and it's important to say that you know you're not there to just do anything you're there to entertain people at your own yeah. you know at your own you have control over the situation you know yeah. um but shoe on head was like the dumbest request that anyone could ever make Hey, we'll put a shoe on your head and people will be like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'll just do it. It just kind of shows the psychology behind being the person behind the camera. Um, yeah. If you remember Sebastian, he's the one that got me into streaming. He did that a couple times. He put he a put shoe, shoe on, on head. head. Did, yeah, he put shoe on. I wonder if that <laughs> ever benefited anyone. If anyone was like, yeah, I'll subscribe because of shoe I, on head. I think he put a shoe on his head and then he didn't think it was enough at one point and poured a beer into it and drank it. Okay. Well, that's like just totally pushing it to the next level. Yeah. I, I think that that was one point. This is like way back in the day, like 2014. That's actually but, yeah. pretty funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with so many individuals getting into streaming content creation and all of that good stuff. I mean, m largely because of coronavirus, there's no shortage of creativity at the moment. Uh, do you happen to have any advice for would be streamers? Be yourself, 100% be yourself. Uh, it's okay to, what I like to say, yoink ideas. Like you said, eating every uh, every flavor of Oreo or Pringles or eating everything at the Wendy's menu or something like that. But make <laughs> it interesting. Uh, it's like, a good idea. Yeah, like you could do those. But if you literally copy it from word to word, that's just, hey, let me copy your homework type thing. Just be yourself 
try and be like even if you feel like you're not entertaining just put some characteristic into it like care like put some energy into it um don't sit there like a zombie like treat treat streaming like you would your sex partner you don't want your sex partner to be completely dead while you're going at it you want some energy going on that's what people want to see while they're going at it you don't want to you don't want to fuck a mime you know you wanna, <laughs> i mean you some a- some people might want to fuck up that, that, that's doing a huge disservice to the mime community dude some mime, mimes mimes pro- <laughs> mimes probably got to get some too do mimes fuck other mimes and do they actually fuck when they fuck or is it all just like they're just playing out the motions they just sit next to each other and they're just like because it makes no noise if they go at it there's going to be a whole situation so yeah that's yeah that you can't have that you can't have that uh another big thing of advice (laughs) is (laughs) i'm so used to talking about this kind of stuff that mime sex talking about mime sex just doesn't even phase me i've been on the internet for too long i just went on to the next conversation but another thing (laughs) but another thing people should understand and this really helped me out when i streamed is don't Put your uh, how many viewers you have and how many followers you have on your screen when you stream. I used to have like my dashboard up where it would show how many viewers are in my stream at one time. Uh, like whenever I'm live, it would also show me how many follows. I would always check it all the time. Don't even check it. When you're chat, just notice how fast your chat is going. Because what you really need to do is keep interacting with your chat as much as possible. Because the more you interact and you more you keep them entertained, the more they're going to stick around. And the more they stick around, it's going to build up because other people are going to come in. They might really love your streams, and then they stream. They'll raid you. More people are coming in. It's all about opportunity. Um, so just keep doing it, whether you have one viewer or, or 20. And it sounds so cliche to say that. But honestly, just do you. Be yourself. It's okay to yoink ideas. I'm going to say that. And uh, try not to look at the viewership. It's okay to look at analytics. Analytics are very important um, to figure out what your prime time of streaming is, huh. what's a good time to stream on, uh, like where your viewership is coming from, so on and so forth. That's really important to look at because you can you can base stuff off that. But that usually doesn't come till later uh, to get at least like a thousand followers or something. So just enjoy yourself. Come up with crazy ideas you would like to watch on on Twitch that you would love to sit behind your computer just like this without doing anything and watch. And I guarantee you, uh, people are going to come eventually and and enjoy themselves. You're going to have a community. Except for the mimes. Yeah, we've already like they're going to hear me talking about it. They're going to look for that exact situation and be like, "No, this guy, this guy that hates mime fuckers." My- he ruined it for all of us. <laughs> there should be a Twitch streamer well, called Mime Fucker. I don't know if you could do that. My friend, his, whose name was Fukin Leo, uh, he had the name for ten years, and he ha- no, not ten, six years, and he had to ch- uh, change it just recently to something Lion because wasn't, of the Fukin Fukin word. It wasn't family friendly enough. Yeah. But he but had it for six years. Just to touch on what you just said, though, I think that that's important. Uh, being really organic with your 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 fan base and your community, and kind of really feel. I mean, you you want to engage constantly because you need to make it a reciprocal kind of uh, kind of situation where where yeah. you're a part of it, they're a part of it, everyone feels observed, and and uh, yeah. you know the it attention awesome. is symbiotic, so to speak. Yeah, there's a difference between YouTube. YouTube, if you comment on a YouTube video. You might get a response back, but you don't expect an immediate response back. You might get a notification you got a response back from the creator like a a couple days later or something. But on a stream, they're there to talk to you right then and there. You're live. So they're expecting a response. You need that immediate gratification of of being involved. Um, As insane as this journey has been for you thus far, Mm -hmm. I imagine you have a load of wild stories. But I wanted to take a step back from the professional aspect of you as a streamer, you know, and ask you a left field question. What's one of the craziest things that you've ever experienced in your life? Ooh, craziest. I've, I've gone through a lot of stuff and a lot of it from my past, especially high school. Don't remember a lot of it. <laughs> uh, Wes and I are old friends, by the way. Yeah. Old friends. And there was a lot of drinking back then. Um, would not advise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would not advise. If you if you're thinking about getting into heavy drinking, 
get out of it. Get out of it. You'll thank us later, and you'll be more efficient in life. That's a hundred percent true. I mean, you'll mm-hmm. you'll it, it takes a toll. Everyone says this, and you're like, you never expect it to hit you, but it hits you like a fucking brick wall at some point. Yeah, and when it hits, you, yeah, when it hits you, it hits you hard. Um, craziest thing in my life. Ooh, I'm just looking. We're say, looking for a crazy story. I would say there was one time at uh, my apartment. I lived downtown where I live here in El Paso, and um, I threw a big party. And I had, you remember that blue truck that I had? Yes. The blue pickup truck? Yeah. So I lived down there. Um, it was a blue Chevy I, pickup truck. It was a Chevy, I, right? I think no, it was GMC. Okay, GMC. sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I uh, I was messed up and I, I was I was feeling all that liquor hitting me and I, I was starting to fade out. So I was like, guys, it's time to call it. It was like one in the morning, two in the morning. Um, so I told everybody to leave and then I closed the door. I guess I didn't lock it. And I couldn't even make it to my bedroom. I just walked straight into my living room and just passed out on my couch. Uh, apparently, two girls from that party could not find their keys for their car. So they came inside, looked for their keys. I guess my keys, because I had a big lanyard, was hanging out of my pocket. I was passed out drunk. They took my, uh, they took my keys. And then the next morning, I hear hard pounding on the door i'm hung over i'm waking up it's my mom and dad they're like what the what the fuck happened last night with the cops are calling us uh your your car's impounded it's totaled and i was like what do you mean they're like well you're oh no no no. they first came in and said hey where's your car like all you know passive aggressive where's your car and i just looked out the window it was gone um but yeah they what happened was the girls took it they went to another party got even met more messed up and then parked into seven – or crashed into seven parked cars, injuring one person and then hitting uh, another moving car and then jumped out of my truck and bailed off. And then I had to call and make a police report that they stole my car. They stole your car? They stole my car. Um, I, yeah, I was completely passed out. And then the, the, the one girl I was kind of talking to, so I don't know if she thought that was a reason to do that, but her dad actually called me. He was military. He's like, oh, my, my daughter's like student council at, at Coronado, blah, blah, blah. He, it's going to ruin her life. Wait, so she, she was, she's underage. Like, I mean, mean? she was, she was clearly, if she's in high school, she's, you know, I mean, yeah. yeah so she was, she, she was. No, fucking... it was her friend. It was her friend's uh, parent that called me. The other one just came by and dropped off my keys. Okay. But so I was like, like I, this I was girl like, I need... fucking was drunk and took your car. Mm-hmm. And and fucking and I made a yeah, that's that, that's fucking crazy. So, it was so nuts the damage done to that that truck. And then my uh, my parents had the the truck for a while. Um, they were trying to figure out what we got to do because it seemed total. My dad literally just took a sledgehammer and took all the the panels off on the side of the doors and just started hitting it in as best as possible. Oh my god, it was awful. I, I had to drive that thing around for the longest time as. Just a total uh, truck. I mean, yeah, it looked like I had hit a <laughs> bunch of stuff on the side. So, and it wasn't me, but. So, so, <clears> so <throat> what, what happened to these girls? I, ne- I never found out. They, Did they go they to jail? Called, I don't know. I, I never followed. I never had to go to court or anything to, uh, to follow up on it, but I made the police report. I guess the cops had gone to their house because I got a call from their parents saying like, hey, uh, the girls are telling us you gave them the keys. And I was like, dude, I was passed out. I didn't even realize my car was gone until my parents showed up. They're like, well, this is going to ruin their life, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm sorry. My my car is totaled because of them. And then I just hung up. Um, yeah, that sounds like a really stressful situation. And especially for someone to come back in. I mean, because if you have if you have a party or something like that, there's no way for you to, to really have, uh, if it's a big party, there's no way for you to, to monitor every single person that comes in and out. Yeah. And you know, you fell asleep and someone comes in and takes your keys and yeah. uh, takes your I car. Didn't lock my fr- I didn't lock my front door. I'd like, I was so out of it. I just closed the front door after telling everybody to leave, but still, I mean, it's my that's a, place. That's an honest mistake though. A lot of people yeah. don't, don't, you know, uh, sat, everyone thinks that, it, you, you know, it's America. You got to lock your doors. You never know. And I mean, yeah, you're right. You should have locked the door, but you were, you weren't thinking hundred percent. And like, it's, you also had the yeah. expectation that someone's not just going to come into your home after you've kicked everyone out. 
Yeah. So yeah. So that's wild. I, yeah. Wow. That that's definitely one big thing that stuck with me. It, it messed it messed things up for quite a while. But yeah, it was a crazy experience. I, I'd be really interested to know what ended up happening to those girls or if that like if it was pursued or anything like that because dude that is just so wrong to be I would honest so pissed. i would I, I would have to go to the police department and then ask for a copy of the report because i don't i don't even remember their names dude. so there's no wow. way to like look it up or something i could possibly look up reports from like that period of time and see if something like that came up uh and then look it up but dude that's just so much work it's it's the past is the past it's done Fuck you, Grand I... Theft Auto truck stealing <laughs> drunkards. Dude, as you Damn. know, first, uh, parties here sometimes got crazy. People would get crazy at parties here. Parties in so. it's I feel like parties in Texas get really, really people get people like to get fucked up in Texas. It's yeah. just a totally different thing. I mean, there people drink all over the place, right? But in Texas, it's like the goal is to get obliterated. That's like all there is. Yeah, like it's even wild. Even like I said, Peter Piper. I think Chuck E. Cheese at one point started selling alcohol. Like children's okay. places are selling alcohol. Like I was like, uh, where is this ta- going? <laughs> ta- ta- taco, Ca- taco Cabana, that one restaurant, they yeah. sell alcohol inside. That's yeah. a fast food place with booze. It's like yeah. there's booze everywhere. By the way, they, I I wish that they had Taco Cabana in California. You guys, if anyone from Taco Cabana is listening, I'm not, we're not throwing shade. Please come to California. You guys have 24 hour service. It's it's pretty. It's really quite good. Uh, yeah. I, it's one of the things that I always try to hit if I go to, to Texas for uh, South by Southwest. Um, have you have you looked into this Randonautica thing? Do you know what that is? I have no idea what that is. Yeah, so Randonautica is an app. Uh, people have been making these YouTube videos where they it's apparently supposed to take you to uh, a, qu- a quantum generated location that's you know it's it's tied in with quantum <clears throat> physics or something like that, so to speak, and it takes you to this place where it could change the universe. And people have apparently had like really creepy uh encounters on randonautica and i it makes me wonder like we kind of talked about these uh manipulated situations before but apparently a lot of people have had these w- just wild off the charts experiences on tiktok or you know on youtube yeah. i'd be interested to see your take on it but seeing as you haven't I, heard of it <laughs> well i mean i'll look it up but i really hate these kind of apps i mean just like the gender swap app or anything like that where everybody gets that one-time post or one-time experience on it uh, just for it to steal all your data, like literally take your photos and all your other stuff. I mean, that's 90% what these these apps are. Well, like, uh, it's what's my, that one? It's my understanding that Randonautica does not take any data, okay. and their, their whole thing is uh, you're supposed to get like 10 different ports generated per day, and it's it, – it, they're – there, the idea is for you to step out of your normal life and I keep doing this, but like the idea is for you yeah. to step out of your normal life and, uh, and, and do something that's kind of off the charts for you. And people have just found like really bizarre things and, and maybe it's a ploy to get a fuck ton <laughs> of YouTube vids or a fuck ton of TikTok vids or, or, or views yeah. or whatever. I, excuse me, but I, I don't know. I, I, I find it kind of fascinating because it's like, well, if so, if it's taking you to, a quantum generated hole in the universe, you know, what, what, what really lies out there? Maybe it is I mean, a supernatural app. I mean, I, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't doubt it. Cause in VR chat, there was this one map where it had a special program built into it. And based off, um, I don't know the exact wording of it, but it's like based off the memory feed of your graphics card it would create images and environments strictly off that. And you could hit a button and change the environment. And they're just very wild and just complex things just at the push of the button, all based strictly off your, your GPU and, and the information that it's putting out. That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, I saw, okay. So I watched, um, God, what the fuck is his name? I watched Elon Musk do a panel with, uh, who's the guy who, who, uh, who founded Alibaba. Uh, his I name have, is I have no idea. Jack Ma. Uh, I watched Elon Musk do a panel with Jack Ma, which is like two just completely different personalities. Like Jack. Oh, is should... that the is that the one where he's like rolling his eyes? Yes. Like, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And he's like, I think AI should be called Alibaba intelligence, and there's no way that a computer could be smarter than a human being. And Elon Musk is like, dude, e- computers are vastly smarter than human beings. Like. I, you have no idea what what kind of power artificial intelligence could could eventually have, and these kind of apps, uh, maybe maybe it could take you to some kind of weird place. Like the fact that it can build yeah. an entire environment off of your your GPU is just 
that's wild on one on one you know side of the spectrum but like if it could take you to some places that are you know have some modicum of supernatural pull that's yeah. kind of crazy too they say that randonautica can change your future through making tears in the universe it's really kind of and that that kind of turned me off because i was like dude i don't i feel like i'm doing pretty good <laughs> like uh, i don't know I think the misconception that people have about computers not being as smart as uh, humans and not being smarter than humans is the fact that computers don't have the control humans do. Computers rely on our input to use that knowledge that they have, and that's why they're restricted. So if you get, made it AI, uh, that would give computers our ability. It would, it would take away our input. Yeah, it gives and them full agency. It, yeah, it gives them like full uh, play field of, of their knowledge. And then who knows what the fuck they would do with that? Because they're only – computers and technology is only limited by us right now. Right. And output, so. Are, are you excited about artificial intelligence or does that kind of scare you? Um, I think – I think we could easily make it with restrictions. Like, th they already make programs and stuff with restrictions built behind it. Uh, I, I'm sure they could figure out a way if they start to develop it. Well, if they ever make AI, just don't hook it up to an internet. Just make it isolated. It has it like to be a... though. It has yeah. to be hooked up to the internet to have like to to have that that machine learning capability, right? I mean, yeah, but no, they could do other things where they, they bring in like, because I'm, I'm sure once they make it, they're going to have like flash drives that have like 3 billion terabytes of space on it. And you can just Google a portion of, or like download a por portion of Google, plug it in, keep them isolated. I say keep it isolated. The minute like it becomes self-aware and it can start taking over other things, if that's a possibility. Yeah, then the world's uh, over. Yeah, then we're done. Be otherwise, we, we just have to turn off all technology and then it's like that, it's like that Johnny Depp movie. <laughs> which one uh the one where he puts his consciousness into uh uh like all electronics and like the world literally just has to turn off everything at the end i haven't he's... seen that one uh what is it called edward the, uh... scissorhands <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh it's like that story though i have no mouth and i must scream and ooh, yeah. and it's like based on on i i, I mean i can't i i'm totally gonna fuck up the entire plot but yeah look it up that i'm just gonna advise people to look it up What's it's the Johnny Depp? Tra uh, Transcendence. Oh, haven't heard yeah. of it. It's actually really good. Um, I, I don't think it's realistic uh, in what I think AI, but like he's dying. They upload him. Holy uh, shit, dude. What? This movie has 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> but you know what? The thing is, some of these kind of movies, I don't mind watching. Like I wouldn't pay for it, but I'm sure you can find like a free one on Vert on like YouTube or something. Nineteen percent is like that is like abysmal. Like most people were like, "Don't." <laughs> no honestly, wonder I haven't heard of it. It it was like it was like entertaining. It was like entertaining to watch, but the story was a little like, "What the fuck, dude?" The story but, left uh, you wanting. <laughs> no, it didn't make me wanting. Oh, I uh, see. But it was a cool concept, and that's why – like it's one of those movies that you watch on a lazy Sunday, and you're like, oh, this is on. I'll watch it, and you just sit through all of it, and you're like, oh, okay. If you have – like if you have HBO, and it's just like yeah. on, and you're like, oh, no, yeah, okay, I got you. I mean I, I mean, I couldn't even remember the name. I had to look it up, so it's not something that stuck with me. Again, it's like one of those situations where it's – is it a memorable film or not really? You mem you remembered plot points from it, but not yeah. the actual film itself. itself. Yeah. So that kind of speaks to the value of the, the product. Um. My face is coming into view more as it gets darker. I love it. Yeah, there we go. Let's imagine for a second that you've had your biggest break and you're now able to do whatever you'd like without question or hindrance. What okay. would be then the first move for Watch Out Loud? Uh, I know you said you, you want to rent you want to rent buildings, but I, I'm talking about and getting a house is 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 a personal goal. But uh, as far as a career goal, what would be the first thing that you do to uh. kind of like? You know, like uh, for, as far as content creation or what would be the first thing that you would do? Does that make sense? Well, well, the only reason like, I'll, I'll go into that. The only reason okay. I said get a house is because I'm sick of this studio. I really want to get a house, not to park my car in the garage, but turn the garage into a full fledged like studio where I could do a lot more in and have a lot more room and uh, multiple computers, stuff like that. Maybe set walls. I do have some set walls right now from when I thought I was going to go to YouTube. Uh, haven't really used them. They don't fit in here, so I can't use them in here. 
but yeah, I, I really do want like kind of a studio and a house. I feel like it's off of everybody. There's no noise going on. I don't have to deal with neighbors yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, that would be awesome. That, that's something I was trying to do before COVID happened. But um, So it would be your living space as well as your full-on content creation hub. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that answers yeah. my question then. I totally shat on you for no reason. Play oh. me in the comments. Downvotes are coming. Oh, my God. Spare but overall, me. like when it when it comes to like the the, the content, what I, I would do if I had like just a, I was hugely popular, it would literally be the same as what I said earlier. I would just keep doing what I'm doing, uh, probably more expensive things, uh, bigger things when it comes to content, and then I would still tell people if I ever get boring, stop watching me. I'll just I, like the minute I become boring is the minute I'll probably jump out of it. People aren't gonna stop watching you though, man. Like if no, you're if you're inspiring folks and you're you're giving yeah. them something to do and keeping them around and you know if you I mean if you have an idea where you're gonna rent out a whole building, I'm pretty sure that that's a profound idea. Well, you know? that that one idea is I literally want one of those giant buildings to put up uh like a 50 foot green screen and just film three hours of just stupid stuff on green screen and then let my viewers make stuff out of that and then have like a movie night where I watch all their content and then like I'll choose like three winners and give them a prize or something. Full disclosure, if anyone steals this idea, we're going to know where you got it from and you're going to be no, subject it, to the full legal hammer of Watch Out Loud. Well, in a way, it's already been done. The oh, German okay, never mind. Guy, he, he's done it, but he hasn't given away <laughs> prize. He has, he, he, but that's another thing, getting huge amount of viewers. That's important to me because there's so many things that I want to incorporate viewers with in my streams for the stakes, but it's kind of hard when you only have like 50 viewers or something. I would rather have like do a poll and then suddenly there's like a thousand votes and like I really know what people want or like doing some kind of game. I do have a, a mod where people can click on my screen and it shows me where the most amount of people are clicking. There's a, a stream idea, idea that I want to do with that uh, where literally people choose what I do on stream by clicking anywhere on the screen and I have to just click on it and just do whatever uh, and stuff like that. So. Is is most More. of your fan base based in the United States? Would you say, uh, or do you know? It's Europe, oh. uh, England, uh, America. America's definitely first. Canada, Mexico, and I do have. I had like one percent uh, South Korea on my analytics last time I checked it. So. That's cool. Yeah. That's that's really cool. South Korea is definitely there's quite a few people using Twitch over there. What I always thought was funny is not not to be politically incorrect or anything like that, but did you ever see the map about Twitch users that were in North Korea and it was like literally just Kim Jong Un? Wait, really? There was like like he was he was or he he was on Twitch, yeah. He was a Twitch or no 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 not Twitch. Excuse me, flame me if I'm wrong. The it was Steam Steam users because no one uh... has access over there. You can't just use Steam or, or whatever. And, like, there were, like, literally one or two dots just from one just, like, completely – it was just a completely empty area. And you would just see, like, the one or two dots. Like, Kim Jong-un do was we, definitely one of them. Do we know his Steam name? I want to see what games he plays. <laughs> well, he, he's dead. Is he? Yeah, he died. Oh, I thought that he came back out or whatever. Oh, like, I – they had him – Was he – him... he's alive? I don't know. I think I'm he's pretty... dead. I got to Google this now. Kim Jong Un dead? Question mark. Is he dead? It. Wait. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Some like, like K-pop thing popped up. So he's he's not dead. No, he came out like I remember when that all happened. What? And then he, he came out and walked out on stage. Uh, it was like a couple weeks after that whole surgery situation. Oh my god, dude, my mind is fucking blown right now. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I thought that he was I straight up dude, oh my god, I straight up thought that he was dead. No. I straight up dude. Whoa, and he just this literally 18 hours ago that he can har he can hardly walk, so he had surgery. Yeah. He's definitely it, playing it, yeah. hella steam games right now. Oh, yeah. I want to see what he's playing. He's probably playing, like, Doki Doki Literature Club or some anime game or something. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's Doki Doki Literature Club is, like, a, it's like a free game, but it's kind of a horror game. It was, like, a big meme on YouTube and stuff like that. It's like the game becomes self-aware and tries to uh, date you. Like, it, like, like it, date? It literally it deletes all the other characters in its game trying to date you and become the only one and survive only with you. And if you beat it the wrong way... Uh, it gets to a point where every time you open the game, you're stuck in an infinite universe room 
uh, with this AI for the re- like for forever. So it's like, like like that game. Do you remember that game where it was like you had a bunch of different options and you were trying to get through an office and it was like Norman or, or something like. Oh, you... uh, uh, the Stanley Parable. Yeah, Stanley Parable. That no, was this fun. one's kind of like this one's kind of like one of those ebook ones. It's like uh, a. Like, one of those anime storybook things, but huh. there's options you can choose, but then it starts becoming really demented and, and like all of a sudden, like the game will restart and a character's missing. And then if you, people found out if you go to the game files, uh, that character's file is missing and all this stuff, like the AI deleted it or something. It's, it's be- a really creepy idea, but it's cool. I can't believe that Kim Jong-un is, is still alive, dude. Like, I feel like <laughs> I, I really feel like that was like, that was like international news. And now I feel like it's like, that's a robot. Like someone yeah, had to put really- they really like, didn't talk about him coming back. They talked all. They spoke all about his complications and stuff during surgery. And there's a chance he may might be dead, but we would never know because they don't tell us anything. Uh, but then they really didn't talk about him coming out on stage and he was alive. I so. wonder if they were like, "Dude, he can't be dead. We've got to fucking throw this this cyborg thing into into motion and like create it." That's why he's. They're like he can barely walk because they're still teaching the cyborg how to move. <laughs> right? Either that or. He just he just has a look alike. Oh like yeah, it's like it's like a, one of those twin brother situations where they shipped him off and kept the. But how would he be so fat? <laughs> I just I lost know. all I lost all of our listeners from North Korea right now. <laughs> all um, one. <laughs> yeah, all, all one of them that has internet access. Um, yeah. So since we touched on you know the idea of you being able to do whatever it is that you want, you know, be getting a house, your own uh, production hub. Uh, what can we expect from Watch Out Loud in the near future? Uh, to be honest, I don't want to give away too, too much, but just a lot of crazy stuff. A lot of overtop stuff. Um, I, I will always kind of hint at what's going to happen on, on, on streams, but I will say for right now, uh, I'm, I'm only streaming three days a week. Just, I, I felt it was good only to do Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, I didn't stream yesterday, sadly, because... I was I had a little Corona scare. I was scared about that. Um, How often are you uploading to YouTube? I have not started that yet. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so I was going to start editing those videos because, like I said, I wanted to start uploading those uh, the week after. Um, but then my first week, all the streams were like over nine hours, so that's a lot of footage to go through. Yeah, just at least skim through. And then also a couple of the streams, I just didn't feel like had enough like YouTube oomph to it. Uh, a lot of good moments, but not nothing for like a 10 minute video. So I, I always want to make sure anything I'm putting on YouTube is going to be uh, good enough to draw in another uh, viewer base. But like when it comes to the watch out loud, it's just going to be something you, you would expect to see on TV, but in the long run, I would sure. say like okay. a longer period of time. But people can definitely look out for some of that content coming on YouTube. At, uh, at watch out loud. Yeah. Well, yeah. That being said, thank you so much for joining us. I want to encourage all of the viewers and listeners from home to go follow this man. He is truly a gem of the internet. Wes, do you have any plugs for your socials so the good people at home can find you? I'm probably the easiest person to uh, put plugs out because literally my Twitter, my Instagram, my YouTube, and my Twitch is all watch out loud. That's all one word, watch out loud. So literally everything I have is watch out loud. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we call cohesion. It's so uniform. I love it. Well, folks... It's that time again. You have entered the computerverse, but now, unfortunately, you must exit and make your return to the real world. Until our next episode, thank you. Yes, you so much for tuning in. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And ring the bell if you're watching on YouTube so you can join us on all of our future interdimensional adventures. You can follow me on Instagram at download, D-O-W-N-L-O-W-D, on Twitter at download here. As always, you can visit www.imdownload.com for all things related to my music, comics, stories, and more. I truly hope that you enjoyed this adventure with us. Until next time, be well, stay safe, wash your hands, and if you're going out, be sure to cover your face. Goodbye for now.